Guys, what is the crack? Crypto Dini is Dini here. Hope you're having a good day. I want to talk a little bit about Tornado Cash, which got banned there this week, um, or late last week, and uh, what it means for you as a Bitcoin or as a crypto holder, because there are implications that we got to be aware of. So just while people are filling into the live, remember, become part of the community, like and subscribe to Crypto with Dini channel on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, you know, wherever you're at. We're there. Join us. Become part of the community. Have the crack. Learn. Um, and remember, nothing that you hear come out of my gob is ever financial advice, because I'm not a financial advisor, okay? I'm someone who's very bullish on Bitcoin, and I like to try and educate my mission is to educate as many people about it as I can because mainstream media have kept people poor for 13 years and prevented them from owning the highest performing asset on the earth so my mission is to get out there and talk 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 and help get through all the food which just means the misinformation okay and teach it because there's a bit to learn about Bitcoin and crypto you got to learn how to handle it how to handle the volatility how to not overexpose yourself how to not let your emotions of fear and greed wreck you okay but um but the mission is to try and orange pill people or teach people, for want of a better word. Um, and uh, and all we ask is to come part of the community, just hit the like button. That's all we ask. Or throw a comment in. Any questions, drop a comment in and uh, I'll answer them. But So what Tornado Cash is, anyway, moving on with the content, Dini. What Tornado Cash is, guys, it's like a mixing service, okay? It's to help in increase your privacy. Okay, when you're using any of these things, because see, blockchains, how blockchains work is, it's called pseudonymous. So while your identity isn't known, you can actually see the bitcoins moving around the blockchain or go from wallet address to wallet address. You just don't know who owns the bitcoins, okay? But it's actually very transparent. You know, the ledger. Anyone can log in, can log in and view all this stuff. So privacy is one of the uh, one of the solutions that we need to find. Uh, with Bitcoin because you know privacy is a basic human right and um, you know and we've seen invasions of our privacy throughout the years so by banning tornado cash that would be like saying all right lads we've invented a mobile phone all right but you can have zero privacy we need to listen to every single thing that you're saying on every phone call you'll ever make or we're gonna ban mobile phones crazy isn't it well, that's sort of what it's like by banning Tornado Cash. Because all that do, all, all Tornado allows you to do is to protect your privacy, okay? Now, governments don't like you having privacy. They want to know what you're doing, when you're doing it, where you're doing it, who you're doing it with. They want to know what you're going to do before you even do it, <laughs> okay? And over the last two years, we've just seen, you know, the growth of government has got bigger and bigger and bigger. And some people believe that this isn't a good thing and that our world is moving to... Uh, you know, a total, totalitarian uh, outcome where governments are getting so big and so powerful and with the help of AI technology, once you get to a certain point on this, it's going to be impossible to go back because you're not going to be able to protest. If you have no access to money and you have drones, police in the streets, it's not possible to protest and to undo it, okay? And that's why a lot of people are very passionate about privacy. And for, what, 40 years now, the cypherpunks have been working that as we go to the digital age, people still need to maintain their privacy. And most, your average man or woman on the street hasn't a clue of the implications of privacy. And they don't understand that privacy, you need privacy to have human flourishing. You need privacy to have human progress. Without privacy, humans can't progress. Why? Because our whole world is one big political machine. And politics is all about lobbying, and lobbying is all about money. And you know, you can see where we got. Like, take any example you want, take food. Like for 40 years, we got told to eat a food pyramid. Anyone who's half a clue about nutrition will know, Jesus, if you give this to an animal, you're gonna make it get cancer, get stroke, get heart disease, get diabetes, or dementia. One of those five things is gonna kill that animal if you make it eat that diet. So how did we get there? How did we prescribe the food pyramid for 50 years? Well, we got there by politics, all right? And every industry across the board, you know, find an industry. Look at your shoe, for instance. Your foot, I can guarantee you, if you look at your shoe, it's got a 14 mil drop between your heel and your toe, 14 mil. So some genius decided we jack up the human body that millions of years of evolution couldn't figure out 
the perfect mechanics for a foot and we have to jack it up and put a load of padding in it and put an air bubble in it and then brainwash people to think they need it and then what? Now you have industries like physiotherapists and chiro chirotherapists and all sorts of ologists and, and ists to fix all the problems from screwing with human mechanics like if you actually understand the human foot I done years of research into it and I loved it the human foot is unbelievable um, it's an unbelievable engineering feat is what the human foot is but we screw it up because we go and jack it up 14 mil at the back okay and again why is that because we have to sell something there's no money in telling someone just listen learn it wear as little foot footwear as possible okay and your body will be really healthy and your liver will function and your heart will function because your foot relies on all these signals and all this mad stuff okay but no okay so we get here we always screw things up so without privacy we screw it up even more because there's always an incumbent an incumbent is someone who's in charge who has a monopoly on the world in any industry okay we've big pharma we've big tech we've big medicine we big food, we big dairy, we big meat, you know, everything. There's all these basically machines, political machines, and they run the world, okay? Through lobbying and money. And, and oftentimes it's misdirect, misdirected, okay? But the problem is, is that when you have an incumbent, they never want, want the world to change, okay? So they don't want funding to go to anything that's going to disturb their monopoly on the status quo. But humans, we always have, we, we want to have progress. Okay, and the only way that we can have progress is we have, if we have privacy. Because if we don't have privacy, funding can't go into, you know, rewind in time there when mobile phone technology was trying to get off the ground. Okay, people who have typewriters and all these other businesses, they don't like the mobile phone. Okay, or ring phones, they don't like the mobile phone. All right, but well, had we not been able to have privacy that you could actually build, build a new invention without disclosing it to the whole world, okay? Because one, you won't be able to spend your money on anything that your government deems. You shouldn't spend on that. Now we think we're happy enough. We don't want progress in this area or that area or the other area. And be it right or wrong, you see, that's the problem. All progress, no one knows if it's right or wrong until after the fact, until it came in and we go, okay, that was a really good invention. You know, that was good we were able to invent that. But when you take away privacy, you take away the ability for humans to actually invent and grow to a huge degree. So it causes a problem for humans. However, the lesson in Tornado Cash is what happened to all these cryptocurrencies, okay? You know, the likes of Aave or Ethereum, who are totally unlike Bitcoin. People tar them with the same brush, but they really don't understand what they're doing. Well, they've now sanctioned these Tornado Cash wallets, sanctioned them, which means they won't accept transactions. They're basically... Uh, they're basically denying them financial services uh, if you have operated with Tornado Cash before, all right? And remember, these are meant to be decentralized cryptocurrencies, but they're not one bit decentralized because the central authority has now decided, okay, everyone can use this decentralized cryptocurrency except these wallet addresses, which is a growing wallet address. And that's because the US government decided to sanction some wallet addresses. So any wallet addresses that have interacted with the Tornado protocol which is just an open permissions protocol before to help you have your privacy well now you're now sanctioned so now you can't use the ethereum blockchain now you can't use the Aave blockchain so question how decentralized is your protocol if it's the next bitcoin well is it possible for someone to turn it off and we're seeing that on the centralized platforms very very different than bitcoin remember bitcoin's permissionless okay and Bitcoin is beyond human control, so no humans can control it. Even if they wanted to, you couldn't get sanctions. Okay, and that's the beauty of it because if it's truly a money, it has to be. You know, your enemies have to use the money as well as your friends. You can't have a money that you can centralize and control because that's fiat currency. That's what we already have. Look at all the sanctions between um, um, Russia. And uh, oh, you know, over the last two years, with, with the war and everything, like, that is the problem with our fiat money: is that you don't own your fiat money. It can be turned off with a click of a switch. And guess what? It looks like you don't own your cryptocurrencies. You don't own your cryptos that aren't Bitcoin, because they also can be turned off with a click of a switch when a government or a large entity decides to sanction them. So I just call into question: Do you really own what you think you own? Because a lot of people are finding out now they didn't actually own it. 
The only thing, you, the strongest property rights you can have on this planet is Bitcoin. And it's hands down, we're just seeing that. And people have to learn the harsh lessons. So if you don't yet understand that, I would say you have a lot of work to do on the space. And you need to understand the difference in the two. Because there's no point in owning something that you can own it and own it and own it until someone decides you can't own that anymore. You never owned it in the first place. Okay, and that seems to be the case with a lot of crypto assets, maybe all crypto assets, other than Bitcoin, and uh, it, it's certainly the case with all your physical assets. You know, you don't own your house. You think you own your house, they want to put a motorway, motorway through it, you don't own the house, all right? Okay, uh, you own your euros, you think you own your euros, try going into the bank and asking them for it all in cash. You'll realize they will not give it to you. You don't own your euros, okay? But your Bitcoin you do own. And uh, I just thought that was a really interesting lesson to hopefully, again, let some people take the next step. Because people think crypto and Bitcoin is the same. Unfortunately, they're not the same. They're so different. And, uh, you know, for me, Bitcoin, it's so worth diving into it and really understanding it. And I think your family's family's family will be glad you did if you do. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Throw a question in if there's anything you're not sure of, and I'll elaborate on it. And uh, enjoy the day. We're getting a bit of rain here now. We, are, we haven't had rain in weeks, which is uh, good for the growth. Have a super day, guys. Dinny out.